Hello, bonjour, Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events, and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Welcome et bienvenue to Hello, Bonjour, Alberta. I'm Anne Boiteau. And I'm Marc Lalonde. Did you know that the position of Honorary Council in Canada for a number of countries, such as Belgium and France, has been bestowed on well-respected citizens from Calgary since as far back as 1888? In today's episode, we welcome Roy Klassen, Honorary Council of France in Calgary, here to talk to us about the important role and responsibilities that come with such a prestigious position. Thanks for joining us, Roy. Thank you for having me. So we'd like to know a little bit about you before you, we talk about uh, your new position. Yes. So where do you come from? Are you a native Albertan? Yes, I was born and raised in Calgary and I have a French-speaking mother, uh, Calmen Depay, and a German-speaking father, so that's why my last name is Klassen, and spent my formative years here in Calgary. Uh, went through the French Immersion School as it then existed, and did my first university years at the Faculté Saint-Jean in Edmonton. Uh, then I went away to New Brunswick for law school, at the Université de Moncton, which has common law or English law taught in French, and then made my way back to Edmonton, uh, where I articled, uh, met my wife, and uh, spent a number of years there practicing. And after that, we went for five years to Bermuda, which was obviously a nice way to get away from the winter. And that turned into Switzerland, where the French became very helpful to me for five years. And then we moved back to Calgary again in 2009. And I practice at the firm I'm at now, McLeod Law. And what we notice as well is that in these experiences, the language skills become more important. There are more and more links. And that's sort of a little bit about my life and my background. Mm -hmm. Your family, though, especially the Dépin family, has a, a, a storied history in Alberta, uh, in Alberta's Francophonie. Can you describe that a bit? Yes. So my grandfather and several of his brothers arrived uh, mm. in, I believe, either 1909 or around that time when Calgary was in its early days when what it was known as Rouleauville was a going concern and set up some uh, business activities in the city and... And they came from where? From uh, Quebec in a town called saint anne de la Pérade, which is somewhere between Quebec City and Montreal. And we're always very uh, adamant about maintaining French and we're helping uh, to found the French parish saint Famille in Calgary. And uh, we're very involved in all sorts of uh, educational initiatives and that sort of thing and thankfully they pass that on to their children and my mother in particular who just like them wanted to make sure we kept those skills and we're doing the same now with our children so so far so good <laughs> all right and is your wife from Calgary as well? my wife also grew up uh, in part in Calgary and interestingly enough her father is French speaking, his name is Lemay, and his uh, wife, uh, Lydia, is from Eastern Europe, as my dad's parents were, so both sides have very similar uh, backgrounds, and on the French side, it's nine generations in Canada, and on the 
German or Eastern European side is one generation. So we got the old and the new together. Yeah. And uh, her, her father grew up in a village called Troshu, uh, which has its own storied history. Uh, and we can talk more about that with the French uh, people that established that town. Mm -hmm. And so as a, you practice law, yes. of course, and what uh, brought you to uh, this now position of consul? Well, I've always been very interested in international things. And I remember in my first year of university, I had to do an essay in German on the economic union as it then existed in Europe. And I was always interested by that, by the different things around the currencies and the interactions of these countries. And then I, after having spent my first couple of years at the Faculté Saint-Jean, had the opportunity because of the visits from some professors in Moncton to go and study out there and continue to develop my professional skills. And that's always a big challenge for any Francophone, is not only to keep the language, but to learn their trade in their language. Because yes. many, many people will have the language skills, but if they haven't had the opportunity to learn their teaching or their medical or their legal or whatever accounting uh, skills in that language, it's much more difficult yes. to function. So I had that benefit, and it's, you know, it's not just thanks to me. Lots of people before me established those links and pushed for those rights and those developments that opened up opportunities for people like myself to, to pursue, but it also allowed me to work quite easily when I was in Switzerland if I hadn't had that uh, education. Yes. And now coming back to Calgary, Calgary has become much more of an international city and I think we're recognizing the benefits of those kind of skill sets. And uh, that's how it came to be with the, the role I've, I've had and we had a French consul officially for three years from 2010 to 2013. But when the budgetary uh, decisions were such that they had to close that office, there was, of course, for many years prior to that, other honorary consuls, uh, such as Monsieur Gérard Calier, who still lives and works in Calgary, and his predecessors. Then we had Monsieur Jean Chalbou mm -hmm. uh, for three years in Calgary, who on his departure uh, asked if I would be interested in taking that role and after the usual uh, protocol and, and things that have to be done both in France. Is it unusual for a French Canadian to be a f French or, or representing France? Not necessarily. I think what France is looking mm -hmm. for is somebody who has a, a good mix of skills, obviously must speak French, Yes. Uh, but would open up links for the country, for its business people and its nationals who are here and who would, you know, really be interested in, in developing and forging those links both ways. So, for example, if there were Alberta businesses that were interested in making contacts in France, and there are some, and some of our energy companies have done a lot of that. Vermilion, for example, has oil fields in France. Uh, Total and has invested here, here yes. and Air Liquide, Lafarge has been here for, I mean, I don't know, 60, 70 years at least. Uh, so there's lots of history of those links, but it, somebody has to continue to, to develop those relationships, and that's really one of the roles of the, of the Honorary the Council. Council. The only, there are certain tasks that I can't do, so sometimes it's possible to do voting and presidential and I think Senate elections in France through the various consular offices, but that must be done by a citizen. Oh, okay. But otherwise, in terms of handing out the passports, uh, signing certain types of notarial documents, uh, powers of attorney and that sort of thing, that's where my skills can come in to help with that. And families are moving around a lot these days. Parents live in one country, children live in another. Sometimes there are challenges with the states and so on, so there's lots of opportunity. And sometimes there are more dramatic events that happen if there's the death of a French national here. The honorary consul may have to go and do certain functions around that. If somebody is found to be imprisoned or arrested, yes. 
they can seek consular assistance. So I think those more difficult tasks would be well handled, hopefully, by somebody with a legal background. You don't become the lawyer for that person, but when you they're in trouble, the you're the, the link. Yes. Representative uh, for the for the country. Yes, essentially at the office here. Yes. Uh, are uh, are there other cities in Canada that have uh, an honorary consul from France, for example? Yes, as far as I understand, uh, mm -hmm. Winnipeg, Manitoba, uh, Sask Saskatoon, I believe, has one, uh, and also Yellowknife. And what you find is a surprising number. And these are just the people that are registered, but we understand in Alberta there are officially registered with the Vancouver Consulate over 3,000 French expatriates. And these are people that are arrived you know, for any number of years, but then many quite recently, and a lot of young people. I heard through one colleague that there were seven or 800 young French people working in, in the province, perhaps in the hospitality sector, in the mountains, in the ski areas. But everybody's looking for that adventure like all our previous uh, pioneers, and that continues. Hmm. Very interesting. In, in, in your position uh, as council, do you have a, a vision uh, of things you'd like to accomplish, or, or is this a, a role that you basically fulfill for a set number of years? How does that work? So generally speaking, and this is actually set through the Canadian protocol, the appointment is valid for three years and I think my vision during that time in particular uh, coming off this visit that we had of the French president not two weeks ago uh, with a number of business people I believe at least 50 uh, high level business people joined in that delegation is to build up on that relationship and you may be aware that Canada and the EU have come quite a long way down the road on a free trade agreement mm -hmm. and I think a lot of these French mm -hmm. business people were quite impressed and intrigued by what they heard and what they saw and what they learned in Calgary and in Banff and may not have considered in the past to have more activity here. So I think if I was going to look ahead and say what would I like to have accomplished, uh, that would certainly be one of the important goals for myself is to build those trade links both ways. And is this uh, full-time taking up all of your time? Did you have to leave the law firm to no, do this No, in fact, for the I, I must or? say it's a voluntary role, okay. which requires a certain amount of maneuvering to make sure that I continue in my normal duties as a partner at the firm, with my clients, and so on. Uh, I manage to do this for the most part in a few hours a week. When people come, we make appointments and it, it does remain in that function. There will be activities. I don't know if you're aware, but there's a consular core in Calgary where all the honorary and full consuls meet from time to time. So it's a nice link into that group. Uh, some countries have full consular offices, the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the United Kingdom has uh, a, a, a general consul here. Uh, I believe Japan does. China has quite a significant presence, but it exposes me to that group, and I think it's quite fascinating. We, we think, we keep seeing how Calgary becomes international, and I think that's good for the, uh, for the firm, and it's good for the city, and it's good for the francophones that are here, and it's good for the French people that want to make this their home. If anybody watching then wants to establish contact with you, you, you have a website that they can go to to get information the, and the contact yes, information? Yes, so there are two possibilities. The uh, Consul uh, General website in Vancouver, uh, which is uh, www.consulfrance-vancouver.org, um, has uh, information and a direct link to the services that I can offer. And then, of course, if people want to look up our website on the firm and find my profile, that's all right as well. And that is www.mcleodlaw.com. And uh, in either circumstance, I will do everything I can to assist them. And if it's something that is outside of the scope of my activity, I will know 
where to send them okay. for those things. And that's McLeod call, uh, dot com.